Hey everybody, my name is Matt Yoakum. Uh, welcome back to another video tutorial with Pro Sound Effects, and thank you to them for having me back again. Um, today we're going to be talking about immersive backgrounds and why they're important in film and TV. Um, backgrounds are one of those things that are integral to the immersive experience because they convey the literal environment that our characters are in, and they also convey the emotional environment our characters are in. And what I mean by that is that um, backgrounds can be tonally shaped to help the audience understand how the character should be feeling in any given environment, whether it's uh, pleasant or um, familiar or uh, dangerous or you know, scary, tense, uh, if they're in like a fantasy environment where there's all kinds of exotic sounds around them, like the sounds will help us as the audience understand along with the characters what it is that they should be experiencing uh, based on the environment around them. Uh, and, it, and it also literally immerses our audience because we're able to pan everything so liberally around the room and in the surrounds because a lot of our background sounds are going to be implied off screen. There's a lot of creative interpretation that can happen in terms of sounds that you place around the room and give various uh, amounts of uh, reverb or EQ to place them either far in the distance or way up close depending on uh, the impact that they're supposed to have on the narrative. A couple of things I'm going to talk about briefly before we jump into a video tutorial uh, where we're going to actually, you know, just cut a small clip of a scene um, from a short film of a friend of mine. Uh, a couple rules of thumb to keep in mind. So number one, I mentioned uh, in the edit session organization video that sometimes your supervisor will have a preference whether something is a background or a hard effect, whether it belongs in the effects pre-dubs or the BG pre-dubs. I'm not going to cover that here today. We're just going to assume for the purposes of this video that everything that we're cutting, uh, we're going to consider backgrounds. But obviously have that discussion with your supervisor uh, if you happen to be working under one. Um, the other two things are two terms. The first will be background beds. And what, am I, what I mean by beds are long washes of sound that we use to sort of prime the canvas, if you will. These are things like room tone, wind outdoors, crickets, just beds of birds. So not like, not really specific things, but just sort of generic, um, and then the second set of backgrounds that we'll be talking about are called specifics. And that basically means individual sound effects or, you know, backgrounds, if you will, that um, you specifically place with intention in different moments in order to help the environment come to life and to uh, further accent the tone that you're going for with your beds, right? Um, so a couple of things uh, to think about in regards to that. Um, backgrounds are great for establishing typically at the heads of scenes. So a lot of times in new scenes in, in film, we start with a wide establishing shot, right? The camera is way far back from our subjects, which would be our, you know, typically our main characters. And then it, it's, it's showing us typically a lot of the environment around those characters. And that's the perfect opportunity to throw in several specific sounds to help bring the environment to life, to, to give you that sense of, of what's going on, right? So if we're in a bar, if we open up on a wide shot of a bar and there's there's the actual, you know, um, bar to the right and then there's a pool table off to the left and, you know, people mingling in between chairs and tables, maybe we throw in a few generic beds of glasses clinking and voila, people chattering, right? And then we do a couple specifics of that bar of doing, you know, some pool table hits off to the left, maybe uh, pouring a couple drinks or some laughter over to the right. Um, so you pick out sort of little individual things. Maybe the bar door just closed behind us as somebody walked in or out. Little individual uh, sounds that you can use to, to sort of give life that beds don't necessarily always bring on their own. Um, and then as we move into the conversation, as we cut to the mid and close-up shots of these characters having this exchange at the booth that they're sitting at in this bar, um, then you sort of start to reduce the frequency with which 
you bring these specifics into the environment because our goal is going to be to not distract from uh, the expository information that they're giving us via this conversation. And this is something that we replicate um, basically a, a psychological phenomenon that happens to us in real life called the cocktail effect. And what the cocktail effect means is that you can be standing in a room full of people, right? Let's say you're in a room full of 100 people and COVID isn't going on. So, you know, back, back like the old days. And you can be having a conversation with somebody directly across from you. And even though those other hundred people are all having their own conversations, your brain is basically able to filter away that information to just focus on the person in front of you. And, you know, without our brain's ability to focus, you know, away from information that isn't valuable to us at any given moment, our world would be chaos sonically, right? Um, so as sound designers and mixers, our job is to do that for the audience, to focus things away. And as you focus into the conversation, typically, depending on, you know, the context of the film, your backgrounds sort of tend to then take a back seat to the conversation that's happening in front of us because we don't want to distract from the narrative itself, right? Um, so hopefully that all makes sense. Um, just to, I'm going to go through just a couple really quick things about beds and specifics in a little bit more detail, and then we're going to jump into the, the actual, you know, we're going to cut the scene. So, um, real quick. So, number one, beds. Here's some things that we want to think about, right? Tone. What is the narrative telling us at, in the scene that we're cutting, right? Like, how, how are the characters supposed to be feeling? What does the director want the audience to be feeling? Um, so you can literally cut things tonally to be either more tense or heavy or empty or pleasant, uh, just by choosing your beds that have characteristics of, of those qualities, right? So if, if something's supposed to feel oppressive or dark or ominous, then maybe we cut room tones and wind and things that have more low end frequencies, right? Just, just one example. Um, and if we want things to sound more pleasant, uh, then we would typically avoid low-end information and try to pick things that are maybe lighter or more airy uh, or, you know, pleasant like uh, birds, just as a cliche example, right? So choose the tone that you want to be represented in the narrative to help elevate the performance of the actors that are on screen. Um, uh, and then what time of year is it? right? Like whether it's a summer or a winter or a fall or spring time in whatever location they're at, there's probably going to be different wildlife during that time of year. Um, for example, if it's snowing out, we don't hear crickets or cicadas ever because crickets hibernate in the winter, right? So we're not going to cover our nighttime scene if it's snowy out, if there's just been a snowstorm or we're way up north, we're not going to cover our nighttime scenes in crickets. You're going to have to find other ways to uh, fill out those beds. Um, and then, uh, what time period, what time period are we in? This one may seem really obvious, but I will say, keep in mind that if you're cutting broad strokes across your movie with beds and, um, let's say it's a period piece set in the 1800s, if you're cutting some rural area, you want to make sure that whatever recording you have doesn't have an airplane going overhead because it's not going to fit very well into your 1800s time period movie, right? Um, like I said, that seems obvious, but just make sure you're always listening through all of the material as you're cutting it in, because that's the last thing you want, uh, happening is that, you know, you turn your material over to a supervisor and they go, why is there a lawnmower in the back of this, you know, neighborhood ambience that you cut? Um, uh, and then the last thing will be location, right? So are you in the Americas, whether it's North or South? Are you in Europe or Asia, Africa, anywhere really? Because the wildlife that you choose from uh, is, is always going to vary depending on where we're at in the world, right? Now, sometimes you can't always get as specific as the specific country or even the specific city that this um, narrative is taking place in. But we at least want to have some level of mindfulness about the, the, the geography um, and the wildlife that would or would not be in specific areas. Um, and, and you can literally just do this by doing simple uh, YouTube or Google searches uh, for what those city environments may sound like. 
um, there's really not an excuse to, uh, to, you know, just skip over that anymore. Um, and then just do your best with the material that you have. Um, so if beds are, you know, the primer in this metaphor that we put on our canvas, then, um, specifics are going to be like the individual smaller detail brush strokes, right? These are going to be the things that help to really bring our, our sonic painting to life. One of the interesting things about specifics is that they can actually greatly increase the um, sense of pace of an edit, right? So if we're having a conversation back and forth, or our characters are, let's say our, we've got two characters and they're having conversation back and forth, anytime there's sort of like um, pauses or stretches in between their exchanges as they're, you know, emoting or, you know, doing whatever it is that they need to deliver in their performance, we can take those breaths in between, those sort of gaps in between dialogue, and fill them with little little textures in the background uh, to help bring their world to life. And placing them in between lines of dialogue is important because that way we're never distracting from whatever the content is, right? Like we discussed earlier with the cocktail effect. We want to be filtering out the world around their conversation so that, you know, we're focused on the narrative. But the little gaps in between can serve as great places to put in little quiet textures and things in the background to bring our cityscape or our fantasy environment to life, you know, wherever the scene is taking place. And then, you know, actually to that same effect, while you can place things in between moments of silence, you know, to fill out the world, there's actually moments, you know, this is part of where you have to really pay attention to the actual story itself is... Like, if, you, if characters are supposed to be having an awkward moment or, or uh, a moment of tension exchanged between them, then maybe you don't want to throw anything uh, in between those moments of silence. Maybe, maybe even in your beds there are little specific things that pop out that you may want to make sure are not in those gaps, right? So creating specific moments of silence... Uh, or relative quietness in between lines of dialogue can also have the opposite effect uh, of keeping the pace moving rhythmically. It can actually slow things down and create tension that may be positive for the narrative itself. So always keep those things in mind. Always make sure that, um, you know, you're focused on the narrative and what's trying to be told. None of, none of these sort of kind of rules that I'm giving are concrete. It's always content dependent. So just, you know, as sound designers, uh, and even just as sound effects editors, if you're just cutting backgrounds on a film, you're part of the storytelling process. So make sure that you're always paying attention to the story first, and not just what might sound good. Um, let's see if I'm missing anything from my list here. Uh, I think we can probably move into the practice scene. Okay, guys, so here we are. Uh, this is the short film Catman Dude by Jacob Kirby. He's a good friend of mine. Um, and honestly, this is an amazing short film. Um, it takes place in Nepal, so I thought it would make for an interesting uh, location to try to cut some backgrounds for because it's, you know, not a place that most of us are, are super familiar with. Um, so typically when I start a new scene... Uh, what I'll do here is I will go through and I'll sort of scrub through the picture and try to look for um, visual cues that I can use to inform what it is that I'm going to cut for the scene. So number one, we can start right here at the beginning. Uh, we're sort of walking down an alleyway. There's a truck in front of them. Looks like there's some people walking in the background. It's relatively sparse though. It's obviously nighttime. Some guys over here on the left. And then when you look at this plaza on this reverse shot here, um, it, it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty dead. There, there's not a lot of activity going around. So, you know, that obviously informs the way that we'll cut like Walla and other types of backgrounds. Um, we're not going to cut big crowds or anything because obviously it's pretty sparse. Um, so typically what I like to do um, is to start by cutting the airs. Now, if you watched my session organization uh, video for Pro Sound Effects, um, you'll notice this is just uh, just the background uh, tracks from that template. And I like to cut uh, categories of sounds into each pre-dub. 
So for Preta, for BG1, I like to cut in uh, airs and winds and that sort of stuff, like rustly um, leaves and that sort of thing. Um, in BG2, this is where I put all my animal uh, and sort of wildlife natural sounds. Um, BG3 is for traffic and or walla. Um, BG4 is also uh, a walla predub, and 5 would be other sort of miscellaneous um, stuff. All right, so let's pull open Sound Miner here. Uh, I've got the Pro Sound Effects Core 2 Pro Plus uh, library loaded in its own database here that I can search through. Um, and for those of you watching, the Pro Sound Effects Core series. Uh, is really amazing. It's their bundles of all their libraries um, put together. And this is the, the Core 2 Pro Plus, which is an amazing collection of sounds. Um, it's just an overwhelming amount of content and all of it is super amazing quality, which is great because it means that we can uh, reduce the amount of time that we spend uh, searching for things. So I'm gonna start off by just typing in here City Air and we'll see what comes up. So I've got lots of uh, ambisonic recordings here. I'm gonna uh, widen this a bit so we can easily get to our library. I like to look at the libraries that I'm looking through. Um, these are European capitals. For things like air, it doesn't really matter too much what the location is. I mean, as long as there's no like dead giveaway as to where it's being recorded. So that's kind of a nice, just kind of an evolving texture. I like backgrounds that tend to change subtly over time because that's how the world is, right? Nothing is ever really um, super static, especially when you're outdoors. I'm just gonna do a small fade in here. This is the head of the scene, so I'm not gonna pay too much attention to how we fade into things. Just bring that in and pull it down, have a listen. You gotta be careful with the stuff that you take around here, man. You wanna take it to the next level? You wanna experience something? Um, determining what the levels of your backgrounds are really just depends on what the content is and just using your ear to match against the dialogue tracks. Um, there's not really a, um, a rule for how loud your backgrounds should be, just as long as they're not distracting. That's got a lot of high-end content. I think I wanna start to stick to darker tones. Let's let's put um, let's put city night so we avoid things like chirpy birds and. Sounds like it's got some traffic in it. This might be nice because it's relatively sparse. There's some movement of traffic and, you know, sort of similar to our scene, it's not, uh, it's not too much activity going on. It might just be just right. Let's pull this down. Okay, so. Man, you want to take it to the next level? You want to experience something? Climb a mountain. You're in Nepal. Go visit a temple. See if we can find one more thing that has a bit more, just a slight, uh, maybe some detail in it. I like this little honk actually at the very beginning there. So what I think I'll do is I'll cut in just this small section. You gotta be careful with the stuff that you take around here, man. You wanna take it to the next level? You I'm gonna put it after next level. With the stuff that you take around here, man. You wanna take it to the next level? You wanna experience something? Climb a Actually, in that little gap where he said experience something. You wanna experience something? Climb a mountain. You're in Nepal. Couple frames back. That sounds nice there, because it's sort of in between the words and it's not too distracting. I'll probably turn it down a couple more dB. You wanna experience something? Climb a mountain. You're right, so little details like this will help our world feel alive. And one thing you can definitely do, one thing that I like to do, is I like to um, pan things uh, around, especially we're in a surround environment. Obviously, this video is only going to be in stereo, but in a surround environment, I like to do multiple layers of airs and traffics and all that sort of stuff. 
um, and move them around because that's sort of how the real world works too, right? Like things are layered all around us 360. It's not all just straight stereo. Climb a mountain. And I pan the car off to just one side, kind of arbitrarily. Maybe I did it uh, too extreme. Maybe, maybe we'll just do sort of like some somewhere in between center and left. Experience something? Climb a mountain. You're in Nepal. There we go. And then I'm gonna pan, I think I pan this slightly into the center just to help with dialogue. So a lot of the times we pan our dialogue slightly into the middle to help cover some of the noise floors. So now that we've got some of the air started here, uh, let's see if we can fill in maybe some like city crickets for the nighttime here, give us a nighttime feeling. That's got American sirens in it, so I can't use that stuff. Crickets are a little too subtle here. That's kind of nice. I'm not sure I'm a fan of, of that particular thing for this scene. I like the dog uh, barking in the background. Maybe we'll choose some dog barks specifically later. Just find some crickets. That might be nice, just layered really quietly. It's got some traffic in there. Let's just try this. Bit. And I'm actually going to cut these down into the uh, into the second pre-dub here. stuff that you take around here, man. You want to take it to the next level? You want to experience something? Climb a mountain. You're in Nepal. Go visit a town. Okay, let's do one more layer of crickets. Let's just type in, instead of city crickets, let's type in night crickets. I love Ann Crowbur's stuff. Her stuff is always amazing. Um, crickets are the sort, and cicadas too, are sort of the thing where like they do vary from country to country, but typically the good news is that they don't, they don't sound so different. Okay, I'm going to turn those ones down so they don't sound too rural, and I might pan these slightly behind and on the sides. Climb a mountain. You're in Nepal. We are in the Go city, visit so I don't a temple. want the... Crickets to be Meet too a girl. overwhelming. Start a family now. That's no. a. And then let's. I, I really liked the uh, dog barking. So let's do a dog bark in the distance here. Not a whole pack of them. That was kind of a nice tone. Let's see. Okay, those are nice. So let's grab one of these. I put them in my BG2 because they fit in the category of animals and wildlife. I'm gonna pan this dog slightly off to the left. I know I did the um, the car horn that way as well, but I'm gonna pan him off to the left and then I'm gonna cut one more dog off to the right. Careful with the stuff that you take around here, man. You want to take it to the next level? You want to experience something? Turning it down even further. You take around here, man. You want to take it to the next level? You want to experience something? Climb a mountain. You're in Nepal. Go visit a temple. Meet a... All right, so I, I, I like it a little bit later there when there's a little bit more gap in between what he's saying. Okay, so I'm pitching him up just because the other dog was kind of low and I just like the contrast. So I'm just gonna do maybe three of his of his barks here and just cobble these guys together and do a little call and response. Okay, so we'll do the same automation except we'll go slightly the other direction. Go visit a temple. Meet a girl. Ooh, sorry. That's too loud. Also too much verb. A girl. Start a family. Go visit a temple. Meet a girl. 
go visit a temple, meet a girl, start a family. Now uh, yeah, so Jacob was telling me um, when they were in Nepal, there was tons of dogs running around. So I know, you know, from him and his experience that, you know, nobody would balk at dogs barking in the uh, city at night because that's really how it is. So now that we've got those cut in, they sound pretty natural. Um, let's let's maybe just scrub through here and think of a couple, maybe other little textures we can pop in. You know, in, in these, uh, in European and Asian countries they drive uh mopeds and scooters around a lot more often than we do here in the states uh let's just call moped instead of the s and maybe actually if we go to um let's type in scooter Maybe scooter by. I want something with some movement. Cool, so the thing I like about that is it's already got the natural reverb in the recording. So down here, I'm gonna post that. You'll also notice in SoundMiner, so this was a, um, a multi-channel recording. In SoundMiner, you can uh, click on these little chiclets down here for each channel. And uh, L and LS had the best, uh, sort of most present version of this. So uh, that's how I chose that. Maybe, let's find out where this would sit best. You gotta be careful with the stuff that you take around here, man. Let's do it right at the head, because we don't really have anything to start us off in this new environment. You gotta be careful with the stuff that you take around here, man. You wanna take it to the next level? You wanna experience something? Climb a mountain. You're in the. You gotta be careful with the stuff that you take around here, man. You wanna take it to the next level? I like that because the peak of the engine rev there is sort of just right when he's uh, giving a pause in his sentence. And I'm just doing, you'll see, you know, gradual fade in and fade out. So there's no popping in and out of sounds. It all sounds natural. It's rolling through leaves. <laughs> Those might be nice, actually. Maybe it's a little much, but let's just grab the first part of that and just put that here for our guys who are chilling on the left before we uh, before we get to them. So I think they're right about there. The guy's got his hand up. Looks like he could just be finishing coughing. Let's bring the coughs back here. Just do a slow fade in. Let's see how this sounds. I'm gonna pan him off to the left. Like say, say, right? No, man, I'm serious. Nah, man. People are sick everywhere, man. They just don't know how to deal with it. Don't. Okay, so um, that's actually a little bit distracting. So I'm going to turn it down. Nah, People are sick everywhere, man. They just don't know how to deal with it. You know, we're actually. This is a. This is a. A case where. We're having a shift in the actual narrative here where the stuff that he's been smoking is going to start kicking in and affecting his mental state. So while it's appropriate to, you know, cover these guys over here on the left because they're, they're clearly, you know, active out here at night, it's actually distracting from what this guy is saying. So in the context of the narrative, it's actually more helpful probably to underplay or not have anything here at all. So, um, you know, this is what I was talking about earlier, where you've got to exercise discretion in uh, where you place things and why. Um, and make sure you're never, uh, you know, intruding on the intimate nature of, a, of dialogue. I like that. So we're just going to put in one more scooter here. Pan it slightly to the other side, because our left side has been pretty active. And then give it some verb, turn it down. Nepal, 
Go visit a temple. I'm gonna give that way more verb. Climb a mountain. You're in Nepal. Go visit a temple. That works. So now you can see we've started to build up, you know, like the textures and things for this scene. Um, and we've also covered it in beds. So the next part that I want to discuss is, um, you know, as we, as we move forward in this short film, you know, this guy has basically come here to Nepal to escape his problems. He's been given a diagnosis and he's basically just uh, choosing to ignore it and to go, you know, off on an adventure and to try to cure his pain with, uh, you know, various substances. So what's happening here is that this stuff is going to start to kick in and we're going to notice through the camera work and the visuals and the color and everything, as well as the vocal treatment up here, that... Um, things are going to start to change for him mentally. So we want to reflect that in our backgrounds. And so an interesting way to do that is as this stuff kicks in, we're actually going to fade out of our realistic backgrounds and we're going to try to lay it, layer in here some um, backgrounds that maybe uh, reflect a different state of mind and aren't as realistic, but will help to put us in his world psychologically. So I'm going to go here and put in like... Um, Let's say dark tones. So I kind of like that. I'm just adjusting the pitch here to be what I feel would be a little bit more appropriate. I like that. So I'm going to grab this chunk here. We're going to start to fade this. As the other stuff is fading out, we're going to fade this in. Uh, man. People are sick everywhere, man. Yeah, man, man. They just don't know how to deal with it. Don't fuck this one up, man. You're dying. You're dying. Just call your fam. Oh, wait, 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 wait. How did you know that? 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 Yeah, so see, as we leave the real world, we're left with this sort of designy tone, which is nice. Um, let's see what this dark presence is. So. Oh, I like that, especially the pitching down reflects his mental state as well let's add that in i'm gonna do a fade into that man. people are sick everywhere man. Man, 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 man they just don't know how to deal with it don't fuck this one up man, man, man. you're dying you're dying, you're dying. You're dying. just call your fam oh wait 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 how'd you know that know that know that know that so i'm just sort of shaping this volume on the fly it. Okay guys, so my apologies here. Um, my mic accidentally, for some reason, cut off while I was actually recording this section and I had to basically cut most of the audio out. So just to give you a little explanation here, I'm just grabbing these country crickets that we had cut in earlier. This is something I like doing. Um, and then I'm going to open up pitch and time here off to the side. And I'm going to start pitching and lengthening these crickets down. And what that does is basically create sort of an unnaturally long, uh, you know, sort of tone that sounds pretty otherworldly and will help to match his state of mind. So now we'll jump back to the original audio. How to deal with it. Crickets that come Don't fuck in. this one up, man. You're dying. You're dying. You're dying. Just call your fam. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Let me pan these back to the front a little bit and give them some of my, uh, this is like a bigger, lush sort of cinematic verb. How'd you know that? How'd you know that? How'd you know that? And that's nice because now we're taking a natural element and warping it, which is really what his experience of reality is, right? He's going to start experiencing a warped reality. 
Um, another thing Jacob told me was that there were tons of monkeys running around Nepal all the time. Um, you know, if I had more time here, I would definitely do my research on specifically what species of monkey uh, are in Nepal. But for the sake of, just for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to choose one that I think sounds nice. Those are a little too crazy. I don't really want screaming ones. Little capuchin monkeys. Let's slow these way down. I wonder what they sound like. <laughs> Almost synthetic in nature. Oh, that's interesting. I bet if we slow this way down. Sounds almost, uh... So this is actually a pretty good trick for just achieving sort of exotic, um, especially like sci-fi fantasy movie backgrounds, is you take these sort of, uh, quote unquote normal sounds and then pitch them way down and slow them way down and they give you these really cool um, textures that you might not hear in, in the real world and let's give this a lot of verb too let's try this So that, that's a little goofy. Um, I may, you know, make a different decision there if I had more time. But, you know, for the purposes of this video, basically, um, I just wanted to showcase sort of the, the thought process behind going in here and making decisions for the beds that we're cutting and the specific little details that we're adding in to try to bring this world to life. Um, hopefully it's all making sense. Um, so let's actually go ahead and just take a listen to this full scene here and see if uh, you know we achieve that and maybe we could just point out a couple things that we could improve. You gotta be careful with the stuff that you take around here, man. You wanna take it to the next level? You wanna experience something? Climb a mountain. You're in Nepal. Go visit a temple. Meet a girl. Start a family. Now that's no. a trip. No, 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 I can't handle what you're saying, what saying, what saying right, right? No, man, I'm serious. Nah, man. People are sick everywhere, man. Yeah, man, man, man. They just don't know how to deal with it. Don't fuck this one up, man. You're dying. You're dying. You're dying. Just call your family. Oh, wait, 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 wait. How'd you know that? How'd you that? know that? How'd you know that? I'm not You go. Okay, let's definitely put in a couple more elements. It's feeling a little sparse. Let's maybe grab um let's grab another let's grab a motorcycle. So if I go into the folder browser here, uh there's this uh library that I love called Urban Elements. And in here, he's got, he's got all kinds of stuff uh, sorted out in these vehicles and these motorcycles. That sounds good. That's probably a bigger Harley. That one's interesting. Let's grab this one. Go down to our third pre-dub here for traffic. Let's see what this one sounds like if we add this in here, because it's feeling a little sparse once he uh, starts to go under. So then what I would do here is I'd pop open the clip effects window and definitely roll off some of that high end. Where'd you go? Probably put another lower bass tone under here just to sort of fill out the frequency spectrum a bit. Down just slightly. 
And then I'd probably grab one more cricket layer. Try that. Give this some of the verb that we were using as well. So immediately that adds some more go. movement to the thing, helps it not feel as sparse. I'm gonna turn down that motorcycle a bit more. You go and there we have it so you know obviously uh the thing about backgrounds is you can spend a ton of time on them and honestly you should because at the end of the day it creates a more believable and a more immersive experience um honestly like if i had you know two more hours to sit here just just on this section right like you know for the full scene i, I would definitely take the time to do that because um especially an exotic environment like this deserves, um, you know, some special attention. And as you can see, also sometimes takes some trial and error. You know, a lot of times, you know, searching for this stuff, even if you have an amazing library, like the one I've got here from Pro Sound Effects, um, it, it's, it takes time and, and you don't always land on the right stuff the first try. So, you know, um, if you're feeling frustrated on any one given category, move on to another one. If you can't seem to find certain textures you're looking for, try changing up your search terms as well. Like, you know, try to bring in as much variety to your vocabulary that you're using as well, because a lot of times it'll turn up things that um, maybe you weren't expecting. And, um, you know, just always make sure that you're in support of the narrative. Make sure you're setting the tone that you want to be set and uh, just enjoy cutting and um, hearing how immersive your ambiences can be. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe to Pro Sound Effects. It really helps them out. Uh, check out their amazing library collections. Their core collections have all kinds of libraries and there's different bundles and different sizes depending on your needs. Um, all of their libraries are really just a joy to work with. So definitely check them out. And until the next one.